There's been a lot of drama surrounding Reddit lately, and lots of people have lots of opinions on what Reddit is trying to do with its API pricing. Lots of subreddits have gone 18 plus to help prevent ads from showing up, while others have gone completely private. Now look, I'm not here to judge anybody for what they're doing, but in this video, I wanna show you an alternate Reddit front end that's focused on privacy and called Teddit. Now Teddit is a free and open source alternative Reddit front end inspired by the Knitter project. As we can see on Teddit's repository, there's no JavaScript or ads. All requests go through the back end, so the client never talks to Reddit, and this prevents Reddit from tracking your IP or JavaScript fingerprint. So here's the thing about Teddit with using a basic setup anyway. Uh, using Teddit will only allow you to browse Reddit. You won't be logged in, you won't be able to leave comments, you won't be able to upvote or downvote anything on Reddit. This Teddit setup is just to browse Reddit. If you'd like any further details on anything about Teddit, I'll have a link to the repository in the description down below. And from there, you can read more about their project or join their matrix chat server and chat with them about any ideas or issues that you might have. Now, while Teddit.net is the official instance, there are a number of hosted instances that you can take a look at if you're interested in doing that. Or, you know, the reason we're here, uh, you can also host your own instance. So let's take a look at that now. On the repository page, you can scroll down and find a Docker Compose that can be used to deploy the Teddit container, as well as the Redis cache that Teddit uses. Depending on how you want to use Teddit, there are a couple of things that you may need or want to change. So if you're going to use this on a domain, then you need to change the domain variable to whatever your domain is that you plan to use. You can also change the port from 8080 to something else if you want to or need to, but that again will depend on your setup. Now, if you just plan to use this locally, you can change and or remove the appropriate lines per the instructions below the Docker Compose. Also, be sure to scroll down to the repository page a bit farther so that you can see the full list of environment variables that are available for your Teddit setup. You can add and adjust them as you need for your particular use case. Just know that there are several that default to either true or false, and you only need to add them to your Docker Compose if you need to change them for your use case. So to get this installed, you're going to need a Docker server of your choice set up and configured. Once you've got that, you can then choose to deploy this via command line or a GUI like Portainer. Now, because I am a fan of Portainer and have been for a long time, that's what I'm going to use to install Teddit. I'm also going to use Portainer later when I show how to edit the config file of Teddit to update some settings after the container is deployed. If you're not sure how to install Portainer, I will link to Portainer's instructions on getting it installed down in the description. So we're gonna head over to our running Portainer instance and get logged in. Then we're going to click on stacks and then add a stack. The first thing we're gonna do is give our stack a name and I'm going to call it Teddit Tut. Then I'm going to paste in my Docker Compose. Now I've already modified it to have the basic settings I need for my deployment. Then I'm gonna scroll down and click on deploy the stack. After just a couple of moments, the page will refresh and you'll see your new container is listed along with that Redis container. It will probably say it's starting for a moment and then it should be ready to use. At this point, if you haven't already and you need one, you'll want to configure your reverse proxy of choice. Now, as per usual, I'm going to be using Cloudflare tunnels, but you can use whichever reverse proxy you prefer. Now, you should be able to go to your domain and you should see your new Teddit instance up and running. Simple enough. Now, let's say that you're not happy with the list of uh, topics or subreddits that are listed across the top of the page. You can actually change those and there are a couple of ways that you could do that. Based on the environment variable list on the repository page, it seems that you can list the subreddits you want using the suggested underscore subreddits variable, but I couldn't find any documentation about what that would look like. So if you happen to know what that would look like or where to find that information, please let me know in the comment section down below. Otherwise, the other way we can do this is by modifying the config file that the container uses. Now there's a couple of different ways that we can go about this and we're gonna cover both of them. With one option, we will use Portainer and log in uh, to the console for that container and modify the config.js 
file of there. Later, we'll talk about mounting uh, a config.js file of our own creation so that when we do updates or the container restarts, uh, it won't actually undo any of the things that we want our container to have. And we'll talk about both of those setups. So in order to do the portainer method, if you will, uh, we're going to go back over to portainer, find our Tedit container and click the container console icon. And then we can use our favorite text editor to edit the config.js file. Now, if you try to use nano as your editor, you're probably going to run into an error that says nano can't be found. In order to get nano installed, you can just do apt update and then apt install nano, and then you can run nano config.js, and then you'll be able to edit that file. So on this config.js file, there are a lot of settings in here that you can change. And I encourage you to look through the settings and make sure that everything looks good to you and only change what you need for your setup. So let's go ahead and scroll down to the suggested underscore subreddits section. And here we can see a list of all of the subreddits listed at the top of our Tedit instance. We can delete, add, or change these entries as much as we'd like. Just be sure to match the name and letter casing of the subreddits that you want to show up in your header. Once you've modified the config.js file to your liking, you can then save and exit the file. Now you'll need to restart the container in order for the changes to take effect. Now, as I mentioned, there is a chance that doing it this way could cause the changes you make to be overwritten when you update the container in the future. So to prevent this, you could also create your own config.js and mount it in your Docker Compose like we talked about earlier, and we're gonna take a look at how to do that now. So the way I found it was easiest to do this was actually go back over to the console icon for the Tedit uh, container over in Portainer, do a cat config.js so that it lists out the entire content of the config.js file and copy that. Now you can SSH into your server using your favorite terminal emulator. And then once you're SSH'd in, you can then create a config.js file, just make note of where it is. So you can do something like nano space config.js uh, and then paste in uh, the, what you just copied from the original config.js file. Now you can modify the, the config.js file that we just created. Make sure that it's set up the way you want, save and exit the file. So once you have modified and saved your config.js file, now you'll go back over to whether it was command line or portainer, wherever you uh, deployed your Docker Compose earlier, you're gonna edit that file and then just map where your new config.js file is and redeploy your Tedit instance. And doing this will make sure that uh, anytime the, the container needs an update or, or whatever the case is, uh, the, the config.js file that's in the container itself won't have any effect when it's overwritten because it inevitably will be overwritten. But because you've basically mapped that to a different location, your updates shouldn't have any effect on the config.js file that you've created. So something I forgot to mention is that if you ever want to update uh, any of those tags across the top of uh, your, your Tedit instance later, you can always go back to that config.js file that we just created in SSH and then go ahead, update that however you need to update it, save it, restart the container, and you should have all of your new Reddit uh, or your Tedit links rather across the top. You should be good to go. And honestly, that's it. Now you can browse Reddit the way you want without the intrusive ads being shown and without anyone continuing to build an online marketing profile to you based on your viewing habits. Again, you won't be able to actually interact with Reddit using this basic setup, but you can consume as much Reddit as you want from the comfort of your own self-hosted Tedit instance. If you'd like to further configure your Tedit experience, you can head up to the top right of the page and click on the preferences link. Uh, and that from there, you can do things like replace the official Twitter, YouTube, and Quora and Imgur links with other options. You can also change the display settings as well as your media preferences. Then you can also export and import your preferences via a JSON file. If you're interested in supporting this project, there is a Monero wallet address on the about page, or you can join their matrix chat server. If you like my videos and would like to support what I do, you can head over to my link stack page where you'll find a bunch of ways to help support the channel as well as additional information resources. But with that said though, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.